Hey there, my name is Gary Sims and this is Gary Explains. Now Google has announced an update to Google Bard, which has meant that its usefulness has jumped in one single bound beyond that of ChatGPT and has completely changed the game when it comes to these chatbots and these, these large language models. So if you wanna find out more, please let me explain. So there's a new version of Bard that has come out and this new version has a trick up its sleeve. Let's go straight over to the Bard website and let's take a look. Okay, so as well as updating the actual language model itself, so it's better at coding, better at uh, producing accurate content, they've also now integrated Bard with other Google services. And this is where this becomes now mega useful. No longer are people just gonna be limited to saying, well, please write me a poem about you know, the spring weather on a Thursday afternoon and use the same, you know, same letters all the time or whatever, so it produces this clever output. That's all great and all good fun, but now I can actually get it to do things, and this is really, really important. Now, we will talk a little bit about privacy towards the end of this video, but let's look at what we can achieve. Okay, so first of all, it can integrate and read your emails. So that means you can ask it questions about your email. I don't know about you, I have literally got thousands and thousands of emails from the, you know, the, the years and years that I've been using uh, Gmail. It's all built up in there. And although Gmail itself is brilliant, here's a great way now we can get the AI to ask, you know, use that data. I can ask it questions about my email. So here's one like, what was the last email from Bob O? Don about. Now Bob O'Donnell is an industry analyst, so he sends out these newsletters. This isn't a personal email that I'm getting, but I've been get quite a few of emails from him because he sends out these analyses of what's going on in the tech industry. And so it goes away now and it's looking through my email. It's not looking through Bob's blog or Bob's LinkedIn. It's actually looking through my emails. And it says here, the last email from Bob O'Donnell was about Intel's plan for multi-chip architecture and you can see that certainly was that email on the 19th he carried on talking about intel on the latest email on the 19th so that gives you an idea that it's read my emails processed it and understood the context and replied with what is going on in there so of course you could do this for all of your emails and start asking questions about all kinds of things as using that as a data set as a big you know big pool of data that it can go in uh, and have a look at now it can also be integrated with maps, for example. So rather than you having to search for things, you can ask now Bard to tell you things about Google Maps. Of course, Google Maps is a huge uh, data. So yeah, what is the closest tube station? That's uh, the, the Metro for those of you not from the UK. What's the closest tube station to the London Eye? That's the big Ferris wheel that they've got there on the bank of the River Thames. So it's gonna go away and it's gonna find that out for me. Of course, I could look, I could search, I could do an online search for this and try and find some travel guides or whatever. But this is actually gonna go away and it's given me here all of those uh, answers, giving me a map, given me how far away are the, the different uh, things. So I could I know there is another one, which is called a tube station, which is called Green Park. So I can now ask it, so I can say, uh, how long will it take me to walk from, walk there from Green Park? So how long will it take me to get from Green Park to the London Eye? So let's go away and ask it that and it should come up with an answer. It would take 26 minutes to walk from Green Park to the London Eye, and here is the route on Google Maps. So there you go, it's absolutely uh, shown me uh, what it can do just by, and it's given me the route and everything I need. So now I could of course work this out for myself. I could go in there and start to say, well, there's a tube station, there's the thing, I could walk along there. Uh, and I could, of course, use the destination, the beginning thing in Google, but this just does it all for me. So using Google Maps as a data source and then the AI able to parse all that and answer my questions uh, about, about that. Absolutely fantastic. Really, really useful. Now, what happens if I wanted to search YouTube? Of course, you can go to YouTube, you can search and you can try to find things. But of course, assuming it's got now all of the, the descriptions, probably got some of the transcripts, okay, that it can read through. You can ask YouTube some questions uh, and get some 
and get some answers where without having to do the normal search this is the, the more the intelligence search so can zig be used as a c or c plus plus compiler that's the question of course it's a loaded question from my point of view and you'll see why in a moment hopefully when the results come up so can you use zig as a z plus plus well look here using zig as a drop-in replacement c compiler on windows linux and mac os by gary explained so there we go and if you scroll down uh, here is my my video on that so it's actually being able to understand the question and give me some results rather than me just typing in uh, something specifically. So, um, you know, in the search box and I've got to hit the keywords or whatever to get it to work. So again, YouTube is a huge data resource and this is able to answer questions and, and give me YouTube answers. Now there's one final thing I want to show you and this really is the most amazing thing. Uh, and then we'll have a quick talk about uh, privacy. Okay, so Bard can now search through my Google Docs. Okay, so these are documents that I have written. These are documents that I have made and they've got information in them that I want access to. And of course, I can go into Google Docs and go to Google Drive, G Drive and start searching for things. But I've got a, a novel that I've been writing for many years and it's just too long and I I'm, don't know if I'm going to get it finished, but I've got it on Google Docs. Okay, so... I've got uh, this, this novel is called, its working title is called Cryptic Factorization. Okay, and it's a detective story based around cryptography. Okay, and there are some characters in it. So what I've said here is using, okay, my Google document, crypto, uh, Cryptic Factorization, what did Tom do when the bu bullet started to fly? Now, just remember here, I'm not searching the web. I'm not searching for something from a well-known book, a public domain book, Sherlock Holmes or something like that. I'm asking it about a document that I've written. I'm asking about a, per, a character called Tom and there's something happened. There must be something to do there with, with bullets that I've written into this document. Now, Bard is going to go in there, it's read it and it's going to understand it and give me an answer. So this is absolutely amazing if I can query my own data now in natural language and get some answers back. Tom hit the floor when the bullets started to fly. And that is absolutely right. That is what happens in the story. Okay, I don't want to reveal any of it because in case one day in 20 years I managed to finish this novel. Okay, but the character Tom, when the shooting starts, that's exactly what I've written the character uh, to do. Okay, well, let's try Let's try that again. It, you know, is that was that a fluke? Or was that actually what happened? So here's another one then. Using my Google document, Cryptonite, when do we first meet Abigail, another character uh, in the book? So, you know, this is not something it's finding on the web. This is something it's got to understand my document and this story that I've written that no one else has access to. We first meet Abigail in chapter two when she arrives at the university to investigate the shooting. Absolutely right. That is the beginning of chapter two is Abigail arriving at the university to investigate the shooting. The shooting, of course, you'll understand something to do with Tom that you we just asked about there. And that's it. So I'm literally querying. This is just amazing. This is just mind blowing. I can have my own documents with loads of notes and loads of information. And I rather than me having to go through my notes and say, oh, where was that thing about what was the thing for that? Or where did it? Well, I can't remember now. I can just go in there and I can get barred to answer my own questions by using my document as a data source absolutely phenomenal a real game changer now i said we talk a bit about privacy now obviously it has access to all my google drive documents it has access to all my emails so what does that mean well the first thing is it isn't being trained on those things so it isn't reading all my emails and those are part of its training process it means that when someone else types in a query isn't going to start getting snippets of my emails and things out in their reply that's not happening however one thing that is happening is that the conversations you have with google bard are reviewed by humans for quality so of course it's still in beta it's still experimental even they say and they do say very clearly that the things that your uh the conversations can be reviewed by a human to see how bard is reacting so never type anything private or personal into the the conversation there and never ask it to retrieve anything private or personal from the conversation that you are don't want an anonymous it should be anonymous but you don't want an anonymous level of reviewing uh, to go on 
In terms of the rest of it, I think that uh, there are settings inside of Google. You can say how long you want your barred conversations to be stored. You can delete them after a certain amount of time. And that also applies to any images that you've uploaded. So Google are being fairly transparent about what's going on. There are some privacy concerns in the sense that there is a human review process. But in terms of the AI itself, it's not going to absorb all of your information and then regurgitate it somewhere else. It's just taking that as the context that it's then giving you the reply just as if you typed in you know some kind of program or some kind of text and said please summarize this or please explain this code that context is really what's happening with your data your data becomes the context that allows it to give a better answer okay that's it i'd love to hear what you think about the new version of google bard in the uh, comments below please do let me know whether you're going to be using it okay that's it my name is gary sims this is gary explains i really really hope you enjoyed this video if you did please do give it a thumbs up if you like these kind of videos why not stick around by subscribing to the channel okay that's it i'll see you in the next one